Microeconomics, Chapter 1. So why study microeconomics? Microeconomics helps with decision making. So let's say you're trying to launch a new product. Take an example, let's say Tesla is trying to launch their first electric car. And now they're trying to decide what will be the demand of this new electric car. There are no electric charging stations out there. Everyone uses gasoline based cars and oil is the main source of energy. So if they're trying to make that decision, they need a lot of input and help with prediction as to how will consumers behave. And there are a lot of questions like what should be the price of my car that I should set for the very first time? What will be the demand initially for my car that I'm, I'm trying to produce? Where should I produce it? Where is it the most economical for me to produce it? What location? What is the cost of my production? What are the raw materials needed? How am I going to train the engineers and uh, build the factory lines and all of that? Who are my competitors? What is BMW going to do? What is Mercedes going to do? What is Nissan going to do? What is going to be the impact on gasoline price? Like what if uh, the gasoline price or the petrol price goes from um, $4 to $2? Then is my car ever going to be bought by my consumers? What will be the reward structure that I will use? Will I give more to research folks who are coming up with this new battery? Would I incentivize them more? Or would I give more to the production line workers who are working really tirelessly? What will be the impact on foreign policy? Let's say the government decides that no more exporting Tesla outside of the United States. How does that impact my profitability? These are just few questions that, that will come to the owner of Tesla when they're trying to launch a new car for the very first time. But there are many such questions. And for understanding and predicting into the future as to what will happen, how will my consumers behave? What will be the market situation? All of these questions are easy to understand if we have a deep understanding of microeconomics. It will help us understand what will be the future decision making that will happen of my future consumers. It will help me understand the market scenario very well. It will help me understand and predict what will be the demand for the goods that I'm going to produce. So all of those questions is very hard. And this example can be used for any product that you launch. Let's say you are launching a new website that offers some service. Let's say you are launching a brand new phone, like let's say uh, a new version of iPhone, or let's say Microsoft's trying to launch uh, a new version of phone. They have to understand all of these questions. They have to have answers to all of these questions and a solid understanding with a solid level of uh, conviction that these answers are in the right direction. This is why microeconomics is helpful. So studying this is critical for every, any new product launches. You need to understand how the microeconomics uh, concepts work. So the core of understanding any new product um, launch is understanding these three concepts. A consumer, a producer who's producing the goods, consumer who's consuming the goods. Let's say this is Tesla, the company. Let's say this is this you and I who are buying this car, a consumer, and there is this market. Market offers not just the new car that I will offer, but another set of uh, ca cars at the similar price range that have many more features than what I have to offer. So to deeply understand microeconomics, the individual units have to be understood clearly as to who are my consumers? Where are they? Who is my target audience? And what is the pain point that I'm trying to solve for them? What is the extent of my market, right? Market extension, this definition is very important because certain markets could have geospecific boundaries. You might have certain markets that you cannot have a global presence. Can you think of an example? Gasoline prices, right? Is gasoline prices local? Yes. You see California has different uh, gas prices, petrol prices than Texas because there is many differences for that. So understanding consumers is important. Understanding the impact as to what are your boundaries of your market is important. Also understanding what products define my market. If you don't understand what products define your market, then, then you don't have a clear boundary. Like for example, 
um, sugar. Sugar is a market. It has a specific market size. But there's also corn syrup, which can be used as a substitute for sugar. So is your market all potential corn syrup users or consumers, or is it the sugar market? So you need to understand like where does your product lie? Is there like a clear distinction between your consumers that you can say, hey, this market is only for corn syrup and this market is for, let's say, sugar. And there are distinctions. So every market is has its own like uh, boundaries and its boundaries are dependent on the geography, but it's also dependent on the product type, the product, product offering, and the product's usage in that market. Producers are companies, owners, investors, uh, workers. They, they all combine this, this entity called producer. They're producing goods and services. It can be physical goods. It could be software as a service good. It could be a website. It could be a product launch. It could be any service. So, so goods and services are producers. So typically these three entities together form the core of all the units of microeconomics, right? There's a consumer, buyers, these are buyers, these are sellers, and these are, these are areas where similar goods are sold called the market. Now, so microeconomics deals with individual units. The distinction between micro and macroeconomics is macroeconomics is in the aggregate. If you if you add up all the markets in the country, and if you talk about aggregate things like what is the nation's gross uh, per domestic output or produce, right, the GDP, it's like what is the, comp the overall country's production? And that includes all markets, all producers, all consumers, everything. When you talk about aggregates, that's macroeconomics. Another example of aggregates is inflation, like what is the inflation uh, for this country? What is the unemployment? That's another macroeconomic subject. Um, what, is, what is the interest rate for the bank that will offer uh, a loan, right? Those are all like aggregate statistics that fall under macroeconomics. Microeconomics is individuals, individual units, study of individual units. And if you combine all that, that's macroeconomics, but it's a separate subject altogether. In this, we are gonna focus mainly on like how decisions are made. If we understand each of these concepts, then we will be able to better predict how will the consumers behave, how will the markets behave, how will the producers behave, how will my competitors behave. So microeconomics helps with decision making, helps with explaining the phenomena. Let's say you launch a new Tesla and then you see people lining up days and days to just have a test drive, then you know there's a huge demand. And when you know there's a huge demand, you should be able to explain it through the concepts of microeconomics that we will learn in the series. So explaining phenomena to theories and models, that's another thing that microeconomics helps us with. And also, once you have a deep understanding uh, and you can build these models, you can eventually predict what will be the behavior of, your, um, of the market and the consumers or the producers. Right? In a sense, all of these consumers are trying to maximize for their well-being, for their happiness. And for them to be, to be getting the goods and services on the market, they are going through various trade-offs. They are going through trade-offs. The trade-offs for them is mainly around capital allocation. They, this is a scarce resource. They all have money that they need to either spend. They can spend now um, on buying a good, or they can spend that investing in themselves for, let's say, their education. So whether to spend now, whether to um, save, what is that decision making? What are the trade-offs? Those are important things to understand. Price of goods, right? Like what price should I pay for, let's say a new car? If Tesla sells it for $100,000, would I go buy it? Or would I wait for the Model 3, $30,000? So all of that is important for us to understand what is the price of the good. And there are two types of analysis, uh, positive, Analysis and normative analysis. Positive analysis is what explains the phenomena, the cause and the effect. As to something happened and because of this thing, X happened because of Y. So A causes B is, is positive analysis or cause and effect analysis. Normative analysis is what is the best that could happen for a group? Should the government intervene and do rationing for gasoline uh, at this price of gasoline or petrol? Then that's like, 
a normative analysis. It's, it's basically trying to find out, is that the best outcome for that specific group of people? So macroanalysis goes into that. As you can imagine, let's say you could buy Tesla in the United States for $30,000, ship it to Asia and sell it for $60,000. Then there's a price arbitrage. Price arbitrage is basically the difference you can make by you know buying it cheaper at some place and selling it more expensive at some other place. Um, but in a competitive market, uh, the price, uh, you, you don't really have price arbitrage because there, you, know, you can sell globally, the prices are such that it it balances out uh, the demand and supply. So competitive markets are markets where there's no one competitor, one, one unit or one producer dictating the price. Like the OPEC cartel has a huge influence on, on the price of oil. And at the same time, that impacts a whole host of other things. So you can think of whether there's a monopoly, then there's a non-competitive marketplace where there's one producer setting the price and everyone just buys it. Think about it. Um, is Apple's price point a competitive or a non-competitive price point? Their products are so good. Is there a competitive product? Some may argue yes, some may argue no. Uh, Samsung has done a pretty good job in many other companies with Android, but there could be certain products could be just so good that people pay a huge amount of price for it. So competitive and non-competitive markets are when prices adjust. In competitive markets, prices adjust based on um, multiple players, multiple producers trying to compete to get the price that is best for those consumers and that maximizes their outcome. Uh, real and nom nominal prices are important. We can't say that, hey, movie tickets uh, back in the 2000s were just $4 or $5 and now it is $9, right? That is called um, a nominal um, price, nominal price of movie tickets. You cannot compare that way because um, there is this thing called inflation. Inflation is basically the cost of goods increases over time, right? And so you have to look at real, real prices. So let's take an example. The real wages in the United States increased, um, no, the nominal wages of the United States keeps increasing, right? In the 2000, maybe, I'm just taking a guess, it's like $4, 2010, maybe $6, $7, 2020, maybe $9, $10. It's like the minimum wage, right? So you can see, hey, minimum wage is just going up, up, and up. But then you have to see, for that same dollar, how much goods and services a person's able to buy. Because let's say uh, you, you have $500 in savings in 2000, you could buy everything that you needed, but now if you have $500 in savings, you can't buy even half of it. I mean, things have gotten expensive. So that's why you have to look at real, real prices. And that's where the CPI, consumer price index, the measure of inflation, it's like how is the consumer's basket of goods prices are increasing over time. And when you know that, you can know what is the inflation impact. And so if we plot that, then we can see that, hey, prices, uh, wages did go up, but then it has actually been worse than what it was 2010 and 2000. So the purchasing power of these consumers have gone down. So that's an important indicator of CPI, of knowing what is consumer price index, what is inflation, what is purchasing power, uh, and then PPI, producer price index. It's a leading indicator, which is the, um, the inflation for intermediate goods, wholesale goods. Um, that is PPI. So PPI is a leading indicator, I would say then for CPI, because if PPI keeps increasing and CPI would increase, inflation would increase, the cost of goods would go up. So these are all the terms. We need to understand the markets, we need to understand consumers, we need to understand producers. We looked at various types of interactions that can happen. We, we started off with a very real example of a company trying to launch a product. Similarly, everyone's trying to build something. You need to understand what's the economics of doing it. Is there maximization of profit? Uh, actually gonna happen by doing what you're trying to do. So microeconomics is very important. We understood the very core concept today, consumers, where there is um, the demand comes from the consumers, producers, where the supply comes through, and the market, the competitive marketplace is where the consumers and producers sell and exchange goods and services to maximize for profit for producers and consumers and to maximize well-being for the consumers. See you in the next chapter. Thank you. Good day.